For the last 75 seasons, the NBA has been getting greater. It's been crossing over, crossing borders, bending minds, breaking barriers, and shattering expectations. Because if the league's taught us one thing, it's that we can't predict anything. So don't miss one minute of the 75th anniversary season, where greatness lives on in every game. Visit nba.com slash 75 to learn more. Get Macy's lowest prices of the season on specials for cooler weather, like cute boots and booties starting at $27.99. And warm new coats for all, 50 to 60% off. And get cafe-style coffee at your fingertips with select Nespresso bundles for only $124.99. Now at Macy's. Plus, get your Macy's order faster when you pick up curbside or in-store. Or try same-day delivery powered by DoorDash. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. We got a new face mask. You know, I know we had the other face masks. Now we have two. A brand new design of the KISW face mask so that you can go out there and say, COVID... You will not stop me from doing everything I want to do as long as it's six feet away from everybody. And if you want to hide in the bushes to keep that six-foot distance, this mask will be perfect for that. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's camo. Yes. <laughs> but the color scheme, though, I don't know if it's bushes. If you got to hide sort of like in the snow. Well, you know, I it's mean, September. What do you want from me? I don't know. I'm just saying you're going to stick out a little bit with this white and gray and black camo. But, you know, you do it. I'm going to try. You, you try it, buddy. So now you have two different KISW face masks to choose from. Look, I don't know if you've been to a couple of stores lately, but you've seen a certain holiday be promoted that, that involves gift giving. So why not get... Labor Day. Yes, of course. Wait, what? Uh, that already happens. Yes. Uh, get a mask for you, for anybody that you're going to have to get a gift for. Go to KISW.com. That's where you get it. <laughs> Let's play B. Monday. Oh, yeah. Gotta get pumped up. Pump it up, baby. I'll do it. I mean, I know Steve's pumped up for the Hawks winning and the Mariners winning. Hell yeah, man. And you're wearing your Kraken shirt, which I yeah, always Kraken love. shirt over the weekend. Is it another one? Yeah, Costco purchase, baby. Yeah. <laughs> right there to get chicken, left with a Kraken shirt. Did you get your chicken, too? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Chicken <laughs> and Kraken. And that Costco <laughs> shirt, man, seriously, They're it nice. looks just like a shirt you bought online. Well, yeah, because it's not like it's like a... I didn't go to, like, Costco in, like, China. It's not like a knockoff. It's, <laughs> it's like a legit yeah. NHL apparel. But yeah, it's like twelve dollars, and it's my favorite of all my Kraken shirts. The, the one that Danny got me is like my well, it's the only Kraken shirt I have, but I love it more than the hoodie I've got. It's super nice, comfortable. super comfy. Yeah, yeah, and, and twelve dollars is a yeah. great price. It is. You can't beat the price. You really can't. <laughs> and each time you go to Costco, I feel like they had different ones. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I guess because mine only has the gray and like that, so I don't know if it had the others. Target's got Kraken shirts too now. I just saw. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Ooh. All right. Like a power day of the, the the light blue. That's the color of the shirt. Ooh. Time to go to Target. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, right now we need to get to our contestant. We got Matthew and Everett to take on Steve. Matthew, are you there? I am. Excellent. All right, Steve, get out of here. For those playing at home, Matthew will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Matthew, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yes, sir. On October 11th, 1999, the world population hit a milestone of how many billion people? Seven billion. No. Six billion. Yes. The card game Uno was originally developed in what decade? The 20s. No. The 50s. No. The 60s. No. What does Earth do to cause night and day? 
It rotates. Yes. The, what company invented spray cheese in a can? Um, Nabisco. Yes. What is the main ingredient in tzatziki sauce? Uh, pass. Beginning with H, what is the scientific word for bad breath? Um, pass. Which office character keeps several bobblehead dolls on his desk? Dwight. Yes. What car brand sells the electric vehicle, the Bolt EV? Tesla. No. Um, Chevy. Uh, yes. Green bean casserole was invented by what food company? Oh, uh, green Giant. No. Ho, ho, ho. Green <laughs> Giant. Wrong. One, two, Shout three, four, mother. five. Correct. All right. Well, not too bad. That's right no. down the middle. That's an average performance. Yeah. Steve will have to really pump it up. Yeah. yeah. Make it happen. We'll have to see. I don't know. Well, it was just a great impression of the Green Giant. I was. Oh, you yeah. really like that? Yeah, that was. Oh, uh, thank you. What talent. <laughs> I feel badly for Steve because he didn't get that. And maybe you should do it, uh, do it for him or no. You can't uh, if he makes that guess and maybe after it. I don't want to help him out in Fresh anything out. with this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Rev is just a talent. You need to hear it. Well, I knew that. I'm a very talented individual. Yeah. Steve, are you ready? Oh, yeah. On October 11th, 1999, the world population hit a milestone of how many billion people? Ooh. Uh, Ten. No. Twenty. No. Whoa. Five. No. One. No. no. The card game Uno was originally developed oh, no. in what decade? Ooh, I'm going to go 70s. Yes. What does the Earth do to cause night and day? Revolve around the sun. No. How did the sun revolve around it? No. no. I don't know, man. I can tell. Um, the, the, the stuff. The stuff? No. Yeah. What company invented spray cheese in a can? Uh, Kraft. No. Velveeta. No. Oh, man, what's that cheese? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> miracle Whip. No. What is the main ingredient in tzatziki sauce? Yogurt. Yes. Beginning with H, what is the scientific word for bad breath? Holy, ho- holitosis. <laughs> yes. Which office character keeps several bobblehead dolls on his desk? Um, Michael. No. <laughs> He's a character. John. No. Salad. No. Oh. It's Steve. Wow. You need to pump it up yeah. a little bit more. You lose five to three. <laughs> nice Ooh. going, man. Hey, shout out to my mother listening in Maryland. Oh. Whoa. I love you, Mom. Yeah. We did it, Mom. <laughs> Enjoy those uh, blue crabs. Uh, wait, mom. I should someone's mom to enjoy blue crabs, but I just did. <laughs> Crab cakes. Crab cakes. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure what you were saying about his mom. I only caught half of that. I was like, that's really horrible to say. It would sell Matthew like that. No, it's popular then. Oh, there you go. Uh, Matthew, I always knew you'd be something. Your mother did too, my friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Take it easy, buddy. Thanks for playing. Oh, Steve, hold on a second. Oh, I think, yeah. You, I think you get this, my friend. You, do, you do. I think, you know what? Yeah. Oh, it's a nice one. This one hurts the most. So, Steve, there's only, I think, around 7 billion people in the world. And in 1999, it was 6 billion. Uh So that was that answer. Matthew got that one correct. Cool. Uh, He also knew it wasn't revolving. It was rotating that gives the earth the night and day. Fair. He also knew Nabisco made cheese in a can. All right. Yeah. <laughs> She's in the can. <laughs> Sounds like something that happens in Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, probably Sorry. after a long game. Then that's gross. Uh, the office character. Well, you named almost two characters. You named uh, Michael. Michael. Then you named John, which is Jim on the office. It's you know John Krasinski. And then uh, you never mentioned Dwight. Dwight. Which That's would have right. helped a little bit Pacific on that. Northwest boy. Mm-hmm. Come on. Uh, and then there's one question you didn't get to. Green bean casserole was invented by what food company? Green bean casserole. Uh, Betty Crocker. No. no. Would um, that be Del Monte? No. Campbell's. Campbell's soup. Did you use the oh, cream of mushrooms? Yeah, of it was a reason for them to uh, actually put out in like product uh, the cream of mushrooms. Good stuff. job, yeah. Campbell's. Yeah. And uh, BJ was complimenting on my Green Giant impression because I went, ho, 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 Green, green Giant. giant. So, yeah, look at that. We harmonized, too. That was great. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on both the- of you are super talented. <laughs> See, I just want to say that right now. Well, congratulations to Matthew for uh, beating Migs. Yeah, that's how you know what. I, I, I always get a song when you beat Migs, so please, everybody, beat that man. <laughs> beat him since this. We're talking about Maryland, and uh, you know, D. Ted Smith went home to Maryland just recently, and he posted something. I'm hoping it's on his Instagram page that just made me. It, it combined two of my favorite things, crab and pretzels. There's a place in Maryland 
that does a crab filled pretzel. Oh, whoa. Look at that. Like, he actually called me from there. He's like, Steve, I hate to break this to you, but I'm about to enjoy a crab filled pretzel. And I was like, I started cursing at him. Oh, that is awesome. Right? That looks amazing. Wow. You know what? Leave it to Maryland to really, you know what? Make something America. And I learned because I had to ask him about um, blue crabs, you know, the soft shell crabs. Because remember we talked about that, how like I don't know if I could ever eat. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I had no idea until I talked to Ted and actually asked the most ignorant question. I just thought a soft shell crab, like the shell was still kind of like a shelly kind of texture, but it was just softer. Yeah, like, that's what I thought. Apparently, no, it's just completely just it just tastes like crab. It, there's no shell taste. There's no like crunchiness of a shell. On a on a soft shell crab sandwich, but it still looks like a crab. Oh yeah, that that's still the same. See, it's, I, I I mean, I, yeah, I don't know if I can do yeah, it. It's pretty terrifying, to be perfectly honest. I could get past that part. I just in my head thought that there was actually still some kind of a shell around it. It was just like a softer, like almost like a like a, a crab shell that was like limp. Yeah, <laughs> Not hard. No, I, I, I yeah, I, I assumed yeah, yeah, I assumed like that crab, there might have been everybody. a slight crunch, but it couldn't hurt you. You know, like yeah. crunchy peanut butter. But the crab pretzel that that needs to happen at some point in my that life. Sounds amazing, I mean, right? I don't know if I I thought the crab sandwich. I I should be good because I like crab, but why don't I like that it looks like a crab? Well, how about if we blindfold you when you eat it? Yeah, <laughs> because like, I'll order this, but can I get a bib to put over my face? Yeah. What if they put like little googly eyes and a smiley face, so it's at least smiling at you? I well, that would make it worse, actually, Rev. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. I mean, if they made like a, a cow shaped hamburger, like it was a giant giant hamburger but in the shape of a cow I, I i think i could still eat that so why can't yeah. i eat like something that's you know meat that i like in the shape of what it was but i can't i don't know why yeah apparently this is a maryland thing a maryland crab stuffed pretzel oh. i like it mm-hmm. so hopefully he brings one back for you somehow well he's already back and no he didn't son of Damn a bee ted <laughs> oh. Not not that good of a friend. Uh, I guess not. Well, if you don't know, football is back, and the Seahawks won their season opener against the Falcons yesterday. We'll recap the game. We'll see if we got a lot to be happy about as we'll be talking with sports radio great Mitch Levy at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak. Endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit tanklessmadesimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. Count on Navian. For the last 75 seasons, the NBA has been getting greater. It's been crossing over, crossing borders, bending minds, breaking barriers, and shattering expectations. Because if the league's taught us one thing, it's that we can't predict anything. So don't miss one minute of the 75th anniversary season, where greatness lives on in every game. Visit NBA.com 75 to learn more. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. BJ, very excited to talk to our next guest. After a big win from the Seahawks, we've got sports radio great Mitch Levy on the phone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there he is. Am I on the phone or not? No, oh, I'm not really on the phone. No, now like you just sound like you're in the room with us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait yeah, a yeah, minute. Yeah, that sure sounds all professional. Yeah. <laughs> when did that I happen? Told, I was told I sound like Bob Rivers now. That's what I keep being told. You sound like he was in Vermont or wherever he was, and yeah. now I sound like Bob Rivers. You sound yeah. like you're in Vermont making maple syrup. Good job. <laughs> Good nice. Morning, what what would what, you guys think yesterday, huh? Well, you oh, know, it's clear that Jamal Adams is a bust. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, oh, we really oh. need to get our draft picks back. Uh, oh. Well, uh, first of all, let me just say this is Mitch Levy, MitchUnfiltered.com. Uh, uh, go where you get podcasts and get Mitch Unfiltered because uh, you can uh, you can beat him in a game called Beat the Boys, get a lot of great prizes. Uh, yeah. Yes, what did I think, Mitch? Well, you know yesterday was like, all right, you asked me you know, on Friday, what do we think the season's going to look like? You thought 10, 11 wins. I said, and without seeing the team, I can only give them nine wins. But after yesterday, I could th- I'm like, all right, I like where this offense is going. And like Steve said, the Adams, that Adams kid, I like him a lot. Uh, so I'm, I'm optimistic with the soft schedule that you mentioned in your last podcast and how good they looked yesterday that if they stay healthy, uh, and if Josh Gordon comes back even better, uh, we, uh, we could do 10 or 11 wins, like you said. 
Well, I think the story from yesterday's game, I mean, I think there's a lot of stories. You talk about Jamal Adams. He may have been the best player on the field. It's hard to be the best player on the field when the quarterback goes 31 of 35 for 322 yards and four touchdowns, right? Yeah. Uh, Russell Wilson missed four throws, and two of them were drops by DK Metcalf. So he was really 33 of 35. Which is pretty probably amazing. 340 yards and four touchdowns. Jamal Adams was terrific. He was all over the field. He was blitzing. He was in coverage. He was in run support. But I think the big story, um, for me anyway, was... The, the question coming in all off season, and it's really been the question for years and years, is are the Seahawks going to finally change their ways as it relates to the way they call the game offensively? Mm-hmm. Are they finally going to let, you know, they're paying the guy 30, 35 million, uh, Russell Wilson, and yet, you know, Lamar Jackson has more freedom, uh, Patrick Mahomes has more freedom. They simply do, have never really relied on him in first half of games. They like to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. They find themselves in trouble late in games, and then he has to bail them out. And I think what you saw yesterday in the first quarter, in the first two drives, they score, right? Both in the first two drives. And how many times last year did the three of us Talk about how slow the Seahawks start yeah. offensively, oh, yeah. and it's because they really don't let they don't let number three get into the game real quickly. They don't let him cook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you had to go there. You had to go there. Somebody had to go um, there. You know that. Somebody had to go there. So um, I think that's the story of yesterday's game. At least for yesterday, the Seahawks have been asked over and over again: Are you going to finally let Russell Wilson do some things early? He came out throwing, throwing, throwing. They used the pass to set up the run instead of vice versa. Now, Carson wasn't a big factor, even though he caught a couple of touchdowns. He only had six six carries. But I think that's the story. That's the takeaway. Perhaps the Seahawks are finally ready to, uh, you know, to call the game offensively kind of like the way Andy Reid and the Chiefs call the game. And it was very exciting and great to watch. At a moment, I, at first I was like, oh, man, this offensive line scaring me. You know, and they had that sack and all yeah, that. Yeah. But then all of a sudden it felt like they kind of you know, came into their own and, and looked pretty damn solid well, out there. Well, Migsy, I think did we talk about this on Friday? That, that was probably yep. my biggest concern going in because of the lack of preseason. You know, none of us like preseason games, especially those of us that are forced to pay for it, like me. I mean, if you're a season yeah. ticket holder, you have to pay for pre. You hate preseason games. But the one thing that preseason games are, well, there's a few things that they're, they're good for. The, the offensive line, when you have a new offensive line like they have, and they've got some guys moving around, Ethan Posick, and they've got some new guys, they've got a rookie, and you don't get a chance to play preseason football, you don't get a chance to work together, the timing, the chemistry of an offensive line, the way an offensive line works together, I think that was a concern for me going in, and I think you saw it rear its ugly head in the first few series. They gave up some sacks and so forth. But I do think that the the, the offensive line settled into a nice, a nice role yesterday, and ultimately... Uh, there's not really much to complain about. I didn't think the defense was all that good, but hey, it was good enough to lead 38-18 on the road with a few seconds to go, and they score a, a touchdown. It doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, yeah, you're right, Mitch. I think we're going to be saying that all season long. Like, oh, hopefully the defense can be good enough because uh, it looks like the offense is really going to have to be the star of the Seahawks show at this point. Because yeah. we, I don't think we can rely on the defense, like you said uh, on Friday, to be what gets us anywhere. It's got to be the offense that just makes up for whatever the defense can't do. But number 33, Jamal Adams, is going to make that defense. I mean, the defense was one of the worst in the league last year. And they still were able to get to, what, the second round of the playoffs? Yeah. Uh, is is the defense improved enough to go along with an offense that should be one of the tops in the league, especially if, as you say, they let Russ cook? Um, is the defense improved enough? And, boy, number 33, he was fun to watch, wasn't he? Yeah. Yesterday? Gosh. He instantly became the identity of that defense. It was, it was awesome to watch. Yeah, Steve was saying, he said earlier, he says, like, there was like two or three of him out there. It was like, how did he get from there to there so quickly? Wow. How was he over there when he was just over there five minutes ago? It's, uh, it's just, it, it, it is fun to, to see somebody like that. And his attitude seems to be really, really good. And it's like, you know, young blood and infusion into the system. That is fun to watch. And it is also fun to see the Hawks score points early uh, because that, I, I watched that and I thought, I, this is weird <laughs> yes. because this is not yes. what I'm used to seeing. Yes. The, what did we say on Friday? There's something or there's something like 
52-0 and 0 when they lead by four or more with Russell Wilson as the quarterback at halftime. Really? Something like 52 or 53-0. Yeah. Wow. Now, they only led by two at halftime, as it turned out yesterday, even though it felt like more. But, uh, yeah, um, they're really, really good. They're impossible to beat when they, when they have a good first half, and they had a very good first half. Yes, and that's only one game. But that Falcons team, you you guys and I talked about it on Friday. That's not a bad football team that they beat up on yesterday. And now we get a chance to see this this Sunday night what it's going to be like at CenturyLink Field with no crowd. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to know who's going to be most ill affected by not being able to have crowds. And the consensus is that a team like the Seahawks are really going to suffer from that. So let's see what happens, what it feels like when the New England Patriots and Cam Newton and Bill Belichick come to town on Sunday night. Do you? How do you feel about that when people do say that, about the home advantage? Because last season it seemed like they played better on the road, and but yet I think we still live by that old adage of them just being such a dominant team at home. But I don't think it's the same as it used to be. It's a good question. I, I, I don't know. They, they, they did play very well on the road, and for years they couldn't play very well on the road. But it's still, I mean, you, you're, you, you've been there a million times. It's oh, yeah. still a crazy, crazy place when, when a team comes in here and they can't hear themselves think, they can't call plays, they can't call audibles, there's you know false starts. That's a huge advantage for the home team. Maybe they haven't been able to capitalize on, on it as much, Migsy, uh, the last few years, but... Uh, it'll be interesting. I, I don't. I don't know the answer. Um, surely, yesterday it looked like, at least for one day, that the Seattle Seahawks should be involved in a in a race all the way to the finish. And how about the fact that the Forty ers couldn't win at home against the Cardinals? Right. Forty ers are already zero one. Right. Yeah. That that was a that was a pleasant surprise for me. And and that could just be, if you will, preseason. It could just be, like I said, the first four <laughs> games don't count. And then if you don't have preseason, Mitch, I, I mean, the uh, first four games, if you, can, if you can take advantage of people in that, Mitch, I'm oh telling you, God. this year especially with no preseason, this is a time to run the table yeah. because uh, there are rusty teams. I, you, I mean, look, the, the Niners are going to be better, right? You know they're going to be better than that once they yeah. figure it out. And, yeah. you know, when it comes to the crowd, Mitch, it, it occurred to me yesterday, it, it occurred to me big time yesterday, the crowd was huge for us because of how great of a defense we had. And I don't think it's yeah. that big of a deal anymore because our defense isn't what we're looking at. It, I don't think a loud crowd is going to do a whole lot for a defense that has a hard time stopping teams anyway. Which really, the, the Hawks, as you said, had a hard time stopping teams. Yeah. They just have to get more points on the board. I know it sounds dumb, but they have got to be more of a force on offense than the other offense. It's Because our defense just isn't going to be what it used to be. So when does the regular season start? I feel like Bill Murray and like December, like Sonny, Sonny and Cher just Look, popped on my radio. So one I, day, I, I, one day you're going to ask every sports guy you anytime you get a football player on on your podcast, you need to ask them: Do you consider the first four games of the season really like extended preseason? You can't judge anything because people are still rusty because they haven't ever played real games with each other. And without a preseason, I would say. Game seven is the first real game, game of the season. Yep. Game seven. Yeah. So I was just joking about December, but you're kind of getting close to December with this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, uh, you watch this season. I'm telling you, it's going to be insane because, well, Mitch, when have they had time to play real football? I mean, not even real preseason football. They, these guys are out there, and, and I think uh, smart coaches are going to be able to take advantage of that. Really, really smart coaches. Should we should we petition the NFL, B, P, BJ, to... Um, to not count as much the first six games, they should somehow count by half discount as much. in the standings the uh, the first six games. Not at all. I just think that if you're an intelligent coach, you realize that phenomenon, and and that's where I look at the Belichicks and I look at the Pete Carrolls, and I think these guys are really smart. They know about this phenomenon, and the players know about the phenomenon. You can and also not being able to study film at all like they usually do with preseason. I mean, this is an interesting we, season for all that. Can I uh, vote that we stop with this? <laughs> I don't want to go the whole season talking about how this is preseason games. We did it last year. If, I, if I'm going to have a drink every time we talk about it being a preseason game, I'm going to have an alcohol problem. I just would rather not. So you you guys don't sh- you guys don't share that phenomenon, even though uh, that we've we had beat NFC- this, the, the, this horse to the point where it's yeah. like it's sad how much we beat it to dead. Yeah. Death. Well. Yeah. I, I think I, everybody's I, on the same on the same page, and nobody had preseason games. So if you want to say that you don't see the true 
colors of a of a football team until week six or week seven, you can hold that near and dear to your heart, BJ. I'm I'm just through. I saw thirty eight twenty five. I saw a team uh, yesterday that went across the country and um, with some new pieces and a new kind of a new patchwork offensive line, a new stud at safety, yeah, a new kind of look at the offense. I really am happy to see them. You know, open up the offense and look to score early and try to jump on teams early. It took them so long. You know, they they went to one. They went to Susu. They went to they won they won a Super Bowl and they went to the next Super Bowl because of their defense. I suppose Russell Wilson was really good in those years, but they were a defensive minded football team. And I just think it took them a long time to to be able to understand that they're not that team anymore. Exactly. I agree they with just, that. They yeah. just don't win games playing defense anymore. And it used to be the success, the recipe for success used to be, hey, let's control the football. Let's not give it away. Let's run the ball. Let's wear down our opponents. Number three will be great when we ask them to be great. And let's play great defense, suffocating defense. And that's the way we're going to win games. And that worked for two, three, four years, but they don't have the personnel or haven't had the personnel to win that way in a few years. And it seems like the whole world notices it except for them. Well, yesterday things were different, at least for a game. Now, we may be complaining next Monday when we speak about, a, uh, you know, the Patriots. Go, what happened? You know, we may be asking why are they why are they not letting Russell throw the ball in the first quarter again. But it was great for at least one game. Great. And great I and, and Mitch, I was pleased. Uh, I, everything that I saw is exactly what I think, you know, even with my own way of thinking about how football seasons work. I thought that the, that the Seahawks did exactly what I'd hope they do. So for me, I think the Seahawks did did exactly what a team who had the element of surprise against a, I think, a, a, a lesser talented team and a team right. that has a, uh, like paid so much money and, and, and should be offensive minded. Yesterday, I believe they did exactly everything they should have done in that scenario. So I'm very pleased. Hey, Mitch, uh, a few people yeah. are asking. I'm curious of your opinion because I, I didn't mind it whatsoever. But what do you think about the pumped in uh, the piped in crowd noise? Well, see, I don't even. You mean on TV? I don't yeah. know what I don't know what it felt like there. I don't know what this what the the players were hearing. I thought it was fine on TV. I thought uh, you know I kind of got used to it. I got by, by the by the end of the first quarter, I was over the fact that there were no no people in in attendance. But I I don't know. At least for me, watching it, it was okay. Why? What did you think? Oh, I thought it. it was fine. The only time I thought it was a little yeah. weird is when you saw that there was nobody sitting in the crowd, like when they went for an extra yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the weirdest part. But other than that, I thought it was fine. Well, well, let me toss one other thing out that we're not talking about this morning, and it's a good thing. You know, going into these games without preseason and the weird, funky offseason and the, 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 the practice schedule and so forth, there were a lot of people around the league, guys, that were concerned about injuries in weeks one, two, and three. Yeah. Are these guys in the physical shape and condition that they typically are in, in game one be, without, without all the other activities that they would have had? The Seahawks came out of that game, from what I've been told, very clean. Maybe one uh, w- one small injury, but mm-hmm. very clean, which is a, a very good sign, at least for the for the early going. So, not only are we talking about a an easy thirteen point win that could have been a lot more, but we're also talking a team that's intact, healthy and getting ready for Sunday Night Football against the New England Patriots. That's a good sign for the Seahawks. Yeah, and there's nothing worse than a preseason injury. How many times you get so frustrated <laughs> at that? Seriously, you go, these meaningless games, and now the guy's gone for the season. Yep, so there, right. there is something on the plus side of that, and I'm very, very happy, and I think this is a big test next week as well. If we if we can come out with a win uh, next weekend. You just got to rip the chain off of Cam Newton's neck. You saw how pissed off he was at the end of the game. We got to do it in do. the beginning of the game. Well, well, we talked about on Friday the schedule, uh, the, the handy dandy pocket schedule that BJ normally has behind him and to the right. Yeah, I got it in front of um, me right now. Well, well, yeah. when you looked at that schedule a week ago, and again, you don't want to do this every week, just like we don't want to talk about preseason games going into week seven every week, because Migsy might get mad at us. But when you look at that schedule, the softness of that schedule, the, there were a few games that stuck out to you as tough games, right? If you're looking at it, yeah, you thought you thought the Dallas Cowboy game early was going to be a tough game. How did the Cowboys do yesterday? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're you're they right. Lost. All of a sudden, you that thought, doesn't look so difficult. 
the, you thought that the Vikings game here early yes. in the season was going to be a tough game. How'd the Vikings do? Yeah, that, that really was like, I was surprised by how, ba- how bad that went for him. That's right. You thought that the 49ers games, and we still do think that the two 49er games are going to yeah. be really difficult. Yeah. How did they do yesterday? Not, not only is the, is the schedule soft, but even some of the tougher teams on that schedule, at least for one week, did not have good weeks yesterday. So, I yeah, think yeah. this sets up beautifully for the Seahawks. Yeah, we could be. I mean, you're right. We it's not unusual to think that we could be six and two after eight games, and maybe even who knows? I mean, is it crazy to say seven and one? It's possible with that softness. You're right. Yeah. What? Well, read them to me. I don't even have them in front of me. Read them. Read me the six or seven. Well, you've first got the game. Pats, the Cowboys, the Dolphins, the Vikings, the Cardinals, and the Niners. That's what you've got next. And, yeah. and and of all the things you just mentioned, I mean, uh, you know, the Cardinals might be tougher if, in fact, it's true the way they played the Niners. But I mean, the Vikings we can we should be able to beat the Dolphins. We should be able to beat and uh, the uh, and the Cardinals. I, if we want to be a contender, we should at least be competitive with them. And then you got the Niners. You could you you could have six wins at, at the end of all that. You could. Oh, I think you. Yeah, I think there's. I think that's definitely in the card. Six wins. I, I don't even know that I would. I don't even know that I would sign for six wins right now. I I, I might go for seven or eight. So if you do that, yeah. you're, you're in the playoffs. I mean, if we're if if half the season is over and we're six and two, you're in the playoffs unless we have a massive collapse. Yeah, but I, I'm not. I'm not looking at playoffs anymore. Playoffs. Yeah, I'm not looking at playoffs anymore. Oh, yeah, you want to? Especially. Want the, yeah. You want the whole especially, McGill. When when you when you're talking about the extra playoff team, don't forget there was two two playoff teams added this year in the NFL. There'll be an extra team in the mm-hmm. NFC and a, an extra team in the AFC. So you want you I want the this, Stanley Cup? You want the, well, you, that's what you want? You want? I mean, you're, I, you you want to go beyond football? You want everything? Yeah, I think when you look at playoff teams in the NFL, the the lower two or three NFL playoff teams in each conference. Are they really Super Bowl contenders or are they just kind of playoff teams? The Seahawks, to me, going into the last few postseasons, have not really been bona fide Super Bowl teams. They were teams that looked good, that we yeah. were happy that they were in the playoffs, that could win a game in the playoffs, but you just figured we're not going to go on the road three times in the playoffs and win to get to the Super Bowl. I, I'm, I'm beyond that. This is a team now... In Russell Wilson's whatever it is, ninth, tenth year, this is a team that's got to have aspirations beyond just making the playoffs. Playoffs are are good. It's time for this team to yeah. be, you know, 11, 12 wins in one of the top seeds, one of the top tier teams in the NFC with some home playoff games and a real realistic shot to go to the Super Bowl, I think. Mitch Levy, Mitch Unfiltered. You can get it on podcast, MitchUnfiltered.com. We will talk to you next Monday, my friend. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Hey, here's a question. Did did Captain America just share a picture of his junk on the Internet? Did that happen? We're going to talk about this. We'll do that at 750 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, if you're upside down in your mortgage, should you continue to make the payment? Continuing to pay your mortgage or not is a complex decision because you're going to have to pay to live somewhere. You're going to have a housing payment. So continuing to make your house payment really depends on several factors. One is whether or not you have a second mortgage. Um, The second one is how affordable your ongoing monthly mortgage payment is. Uh, Another uh, issue is whether your mortgage is adjustable and you're facing an increase in your mortgage payments later on when interest rates go up. If you do have a second mortgage in this economy with the housing prices being down, oftentimes we can we can take off or strip off that second mortgage in a Chapter 13 case so that you'd only have the first mortgage to continue to pay. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening. You can tell when your car battery's dying. But with your water heater, you'll never know until it starts leaking. Before you buy another tank, consider a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to heat or leak. Lower energy bills and endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian's strong warranty. If your water heater is over 8 years old, it's time to check out Navian at tanklessmadesimple.com. Help America.